So let's yep. get started. Yep. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Research and Innovation Seminar session number nine. Or 10. I would say it's 10. This one says, the script says session nine. Okay, quite a lot anyway. What so, about it? Uh, the title so, today is Digital <coughs> Twinning the Green Areas and Participatory Planning. So yeah. we are talking about digital green twins. And here we have one. a plant. The twin is somewhere there near. Yeah. Well, or this is you a twin, but see. it's not a digital one. Digital ones yeah. are online, of course. And uh, since we're not experts in digital twins, uh, luckily we have uh, great speakers today who can tell about the status quo of green twins and how they can be uh, used in uh, urban environments. Yeah, some background uh, uh, for those who are first timers here. The, uh, the Research and Innovation Seminar is, is one of the activities of Finest Twins Project and now, now Finest Center for Smart Cities Research and Innovation Center in, in, in Tallinn, Taltec campus area. Uh, and the big, big thing in the, in the whole project and in the center is to combine academic research uh, to innovation activities, mostly done by cities, but of course in the future also with, with, with companies. Uh, and, and in this seminar, we, we, we practice this, this idea that we have deep academic uh, research, uh, but then also we have um, uh, applications and collaboration with, with cities. And in Finnish Twin Project, we have uh, almost half of the whole project in, in, in monetary sense. Uh, we have these uh, uh, pilots that are called large scale pilots and green twins is, is one of them. Uh, very successful one. Uh, there are many, many, many people working there. Fabian Demski will, will probably say how many people they're working there. Uh, and, and this Green Twins uh, large scale pilot is a good example of, of, of this combination of academic and, and sort of more practical uh, research or, or, or activities. Uh, so that uh, first it was research and the people were researchers actually a bit, bit lost, they didn't have good connection to city of Helsinki uh, and, and, and so on, but then they won our sort of a bit internal competition for, for these large scale pilots. And now uh, the research group has been sort of converted to, to this pilot group. So, 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 so the sort of combination is, is very live in, in, in that sense. Um, what else should yeah. we say? We have short, short presentations, in academic sense, very short, 10 minutes per each, uh, something like that. We try to be very strict with, with the timing. And then half of the whole session is supposed to be discussion. Uh, we have some commentators, professional ones, but the audience is also allowed to, to make questions through through chat or, or even- uh, and We can al audience. allow audience members to open their mics. If there are good questions, please enter your questions or comments through chat first. And one more thing about the uh, Green Twins. So it's one of the four large scale pilots of this Finesse Twins program uh, funded by European Regional Development Fund in Estonia. Uh, two others were already presented in previous REITs session and, and one will be introduced next month, if I remember correctly. Yeah, for 1st of December, future mobility. The two, two others are, are dealing with energy. Uh, and there will be more, more uh, large scale pilots. We only have four and there's a 50 million for, for them altogether until 2027. So, so there will be more, more pilots, something like, I don't know, six more, probably six or five more. So this is a big, big thing, especially in, in, in Estonian scale. And uh, yeah, right now we're in the live session. This will be uh, uploaded on YouTube where you can see this afterwards. Uh, so please also feel free to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if there's any comments that you'd like to share on social media, feel free to do that also uh, on Twitter with the handle Finest Smart, Smart City. Something like that. So, so, so uh, be, be, uh... I'm going to say, be, be relaxed. Your, your, your comments will be eternally uh, published in, in the YouTube. Okay. So let me move ahead yeah. to the program. Yeah. Fabian, are you ready for your short introduction about yes, the project? Perfect. Yeah, 
thanks uh, thanks a lot for introducing uh, the Greenfields project and uh, I'm very happy he to be here. Um, let me share my slides. Uh, wait a second. So that's kind of the green twins and I have to start it. And I want to keep it short today uh, so that my colleagues have more time to present as I heard that you're very strict. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so uh, Green Twins uh, consists of uh, a, a very uh, ambitious team of uh, different researchers, uh, practitioners, uh, colleagues from the city of uh, Tallinn, uh, Helsinki, uh, Taltec, Aalto University, and uh, also a collaboration with the High Performance Computing Center in Stuttgart. Uh, we have uh, roughly about, uh, well, I would say 25 to up to 30 people how, somehow involved in the project. Uh, most of them are researchers, uh, some of them are students, uh, some of them practitioners uh, and other partners. Um, so, uh, well, I will maybe start with the, the definition of how we define a digital twin, because this is uh, kind of a quite fashionable word, uh, often used, uh, but uh, yeah, it's uh, sometimes hard to define these, these digital twins. Um, well, I'd say that digital twins are kind of containers uh, with uh, uh, with uh, uh, as a digital replica uh, containers representing uh, virtual containers representing the real world, or at least the certain features of the real world. So we, of course, cannot uh, cover everything uh, in in detail what uh, in real life happens, um, but uh, we have. Um, kind of uh, a container con uh, including models, simulation, analysis, and different urban data or natural data. Uh, in our case, we are working on uh, the basis is kind of a digital model of the green environment. Um, in this case, um, a digital plant library um, that will Hannah present uh, later on. Uh, we are working uh, on uh, a co-planning application, which is now called Virtual Green Planner, but here it's still the co-planning app. Uh, this is a quite old slide, but uh, the name recently changed. So uh, this is a participatory tool. I will show you a bit later. Uh, we're implementing a city hub as a link to um, the real world, like the digital twin and the real world and interface. Uh, we like to call it human computer human interface, so there is kind of interaction possible between the digital twin and uh, citizens, for example. And we're working on the urban tempo application, which is the simulation application and visualization uh, application. So um, actually we're facing uh, different stakeholder groups, planners, citizens, politicians, grassroots, uh, urban activists. So we are trying to cover all these groups. I'm jumping over the next uh, slides because they are quite uh, text uh, heavy. So uh, let me start with a very short overview of the digital plant library. Um, we are uh, building a library of, of parametric trees uh, for the cities of Tallinn and Helsinki. Um, we are storing uh, semantic data there, uh, such as age, height, canopy size, etc and uh, also condition of the tree, uh, prediction about uh, future condition. Uh, and uh, we are also, Hannah's team is also trying to, or she's not trying to, but they are currently actually uh, developing algorithms uh, for the change of appearance, uh, different level of details. Uh, so you can have this tree kind of in an abstract form in a very low level of detail with uh, very high level of detail, uh, even seeing leaves and other features, but Hena is going to have a, a better and uh, more detailed uh, overview on this. The, so the virtual green planner uh, is uh, being developed uh, by uh, Petri's team. Petri uh, is um, working on this uh, tool uh, since quite a while now, adapting it to the Green Twins project with a, a virtual green planner. So he is very experienced in this uh, development of, uh, of uh, tool development for participatory processes. Um, so um, 
uh, in this tool, um, citizens or citizen activists or uh, also other stakeholders can uh, select uh, buildings or trees from a list of uh, pre-designed uh, objects uh, and place them into an existing urban context. So uh, we have here a digital model and you can kind of as a user uh, change uh, this uh, virtual uh, city model or virtual environment. Uh, and this is to understand the impact of a spatial intervention. Um, one other uh, aspect is the urban tempo uh, application, which Lau is going to present a bit later. Uh, the urban tempo is uh, visualizing um, the change uh, of uh, the different species in the context of uh, urban environments. So um, in this uh, situation you can see for example a temporal change change over over years of, of uh, or over seasons um, you can uh, see the uh, interchange between um, built environment and uh, nature and uh, a very important part is uh, of course um, the participatory and collaborative processes so uh, not only for the green environment but we also think about the the, the built environment and the methods and tools uh, in general, uh, how can we change uh, participatory and collaborative processes? How we, can we integrate um, all different kinds of people who usually not take part in, in these processes or are excluded? So we are trying to have a, a better or more democratic uh, participatory process. We like to um, implement new methods and tools. And that's also something which is going to be developed uh, in parallel uh, to the tool development. So um, we're trying to create kind of a holistic thing. So this uh, Tallinn City Hub or City Hub I was talking about, it's going to be kind of a prototype in, in Tallinn, um, which is going to be quite public. So this is um, still something, uh, a, a screenshot or photo from, from uh, another virtual reality environment. So we are trying to visualize um, complex, complex, uh, complex uh, urban data, complex data from, for example, the screen twin, um, and to make it easily understandable for a broad audience. So the problem is in, in those days that we face complex challenges and to break them down to kind of understandable uh, measures, it needs visualization. And that's one major part of the, the hub, but it's not only visualization, uh, we can see here another solution, uh, a virtual reality environment. It's also kind of a space where people meet and where people uh, can discuss and uh, exchange ideas. So, um, and also add their information. So we also focus in on citizen science in this hub. People can add their content to the digital twin uh, in this human computer, human interface. Um, yeah, what uh, are the, the possible uh, implementations for future and then also our research interests, or at least uh, those are my research interests. I, uh, I uh, just written down uh, yesterday when, when thinking about where are we engaging and which direction do we, are we heading. Um, so interesting is uh, the effects of construction measures on urban greenery and vice versa. So uh, the interplay between the different, uh, the, the natural environment or the, the urban green to, to, to buildings, for example, or streets, uh, or even underground uh, uh, infrastructure, uh, climatic interaction between greenery and the built environment. So for example, microclimates, uh, urban heat islands, uh, how are plants helping to uh, improve situations? impact assessment of green measures on infrastructure, um, the effects of greenery on the climate on all levels. So not only the heat island, but uh, also globally uh, seen. Uh, also one important part, which is often forgotten is well-being, health and quality in cities. So the joy aspect, it's not only about um, uh, efficiency or uh, measuring things, but it's also kind of the quality of life in cities. Iterative uh, evolution of biodiversity and its protection or enhancement. That's also something we are uh, interested in. And on the participatory uh, side, we want to have more democratic planning processes by using digital tools. Uh, we want to reduce complexity through visualization. So that's also uh, a quite interesting research field. What is the level uh, of detail appropriate? How can we use, for example, applications uh, as the green 
uh, the, the uh, virtual green planner and so on. Uh, and we want to develop a new collaborative urban planning design uh, by involving stakeholders of all groups uh, in planning and uh, decision-making processes. Uh, also raising awareness uh, about sustainable urban development and our uh, environmental matters. Um, we are very happy that we have a, a really great consortium, I think. Uh, we have the city uh, of uh, Tallinn, uh, very involved in this proje project. Uh, also um, the city of Helsinki via the uh, Forum Beyond Helsinki. Um, there's Alto University with their uh, very great experience in, in, in also participatory processes, but uh, uh, also Taltec uh, with kind of this uh, urban planning uh, part and the Finnish Center for Smart Cities, which is uh, supporting us in this uh, project and uh, also building kind of the link. So we are also expecting uh, exchange with the other uh, pilots and with other researchers, and we're trying to uh, yeah, have them included in our research. So that was my little, very short uh, presentation. I stop sharing if I see my, yes, uh, my mouse. And uh, yeah. yeah. Thank you, Fabian. Thank you. Uh, and uh, before I forget the slide you had about the potential applications, please hold on to that. We might want to come back to that Great. later today. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. So as, as, uh, as you all heard in, in, in Fabian's presentation, the, 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 the sort of co-planning and participatory urban planning is very important in, in Green Twins. However, today, I think the emphasis is more on, on, on modeling. Uh, we, we will probably have a, another session in the near future next year uh, dealing with that, that participatory planning more. But uh, Henna Fabricius, I think, is the next one. Uh, his, uh, her, her, sorry, her presentation is dynamic modeling urban green. Please. Hand okay, up. hello everyone. Uh, so I will be speaking uh, on behalf of the 3D plant library team of the Green Twins project on uh, the dynamic modeling of urban green. Ah, okay. Now I know how this moves. So. Why are we building a green information model and why is it the focus area of the Green Twins project? Uh, this is because uh, digital twins and 3D city models are becoming increasingly common in architecture and urban planning. So this kind of naturally creates the situation where there's a need for veg digital vegetation objects for solving uh, otherwise emerging planning issues and also because of the emerging uh, environmental, global environmental issues, uh, it also becomes more topical in urban planning to think about different nature-based solutions which could be used uh, to make cities more livable, for example, to mitigate climate change and affect the microclimate. But at the same time, it also gives us uh, the possibility to lift the importance of urban green and bring it uh, into a more concrete and more detailed form to kind of take its place in a similar level as the, as the concrete uh, infrastructure. And if it's done well, uh, we also hope that it can be used to enable uh, the creation of more biodiversity-rich urban plants. Uh, temporal change and uh, responses to environments are, however, an essence uh, of all living objects. So it means that if we want to create digital uh, vegetation objects, uh, we will need to create also algorithmic projections for them so that we can model how they change over time. Uh, so as already mentioned, uh, another focus area of the Green Twins project is uh, user-centered design. And because of this, this is not only uh, an academic project, but we also, have a focus on creating and developing a system which can be integrated realistically into city information systems and planning processes and data collection routines. And we are especially doing this for our two pilot cities uh, for Tallinn and Helsinki and keeping them their needs in mind. 
And because of this, we have been in contact with our stakeholders, uh, various uh, stakeholders of urban, urban planning. And we have been asking them like, what would they need for digital urban green? And it turns out from the responses that uh, this is a new frontier. Uh, there's not much initiatives to develop this uh, in the world. So the requirements are not quite clear yet because people don't know what they could expect from this. But on the other hand, there's an ocean of ideas and possibilities. Uh, so there's a kind of clear uh, message from the stakeholder interviews that there is a need for developing this further. Uh, if we then look at uh, a little bit more on the technical side, uh, maybe one of the reasons why vegetation hasn't been uh, turned into a digital uh, form, uh, kind of algorithmic digital form before is that it's quite challenging because uh, vegetation contains so much uh, high levels of complexity. Uh, not only that the individual vegetation objects and, uh, and plants can be enormously complex, but they, they also their responses to environment uh, contain lots of uh, details which are maybe challenging to document. But then again, there are also hundreds and thousands of even larger plants, not to mention the smaller ones. So we have used uh, three different uh, approaches to simplify this complexity so that it can be modeled within the kind of uh, realities of uh, digital twins and their performance uh, kind of capacities. The first one of them is that we model vegetation in a parametric form. So we only store the information which we need for remodeling them in digital space. And this gives us some uh, multiple options for visualizing visualizing them in multiple different levels of detail, depending on the need. Secondly, we use uh, importance hierarchies. So not all uh, plants are, and all vegetation objects are equal, equally important to us. So we think that, for example, an old, a very characteristic looking uh, tree in a park, which everyone knows, is kind of more important to model in a high level of detail than a tree in a forest. Then third, uh, we also choose very specifically which features of the vegetation we model against empirical data and the rest we model art artistically. And we try to, we aim at creating very transparent documentation of which features of our digital vegetation is empirically modeled and which is artistic. So I will next go through uh, four different phases which are included in uh, creating a green digital twin. And the first one of them is uh, the data collection. And here we uh, aim at uh, developing methods that can also be used later, uh, also beyond our pilot projects. So we need to find methods which are sustainable and with, which can also be regularly updated so that there's an updating routine for making sure that the digital twin is up to date. So here you can see two of our uh, two examples of our pilot areas in Tallinn and in Helsinki. I will return to them in a short moment. So from the stakeholder interviews, we have noticed that it's really important that the, uh, the digital twin, the data in the digital twin is constantly up to date because if the data turns to be old and outdated and not matching the reality, it leads into the loss of trust in the digital twin. And now this is especially a challenge for vegetation, which is uh, continuously changing. On the other hand, we need to uh, develop uh, data collection methods which work for large areas, uh, even for whole cities. So we cannot rely on very tedious local data collection methods. We will also need to define what is the adequate level of detail for data collection uh, that we need. So here, for example, if we would digitize these landscapes, we would have to identify the objects we want to collect uh, in case of very dense forests, we maybe not want to identify every single tree, but we want to identify the tree groups and we want to identify green areas and where they transition uh, into some other types of vegetation. We have also uh, come to the conclusion that image classification methodologies are improving really fast. So most likely, uh, it would be possible to rely uh, completely on a remote sensing and drone data uh, for the documentation and the data collection for larger objects like trees. 
then smaller fe features uh, like rapid vegetation. Uh, then another matter which we haven't yet really solved, uh, maybe some ideas could be got uh, from uh, utilizing better citizen science data or certain kind of sensors. Uh, the second aspect of uh, creating the green digital twin is the storage mechanism. So uh, there already exists uh, standards for storing uh, kind of static uh, uh, city objects in, into city databases, uh, for example, using the city GML standard. Uh, so in this project, we are planning a standard extension uh, to the city model, uh, city GML standard, so that we can uh, can document vegetation objects more uh, in a detailed level. On top of that, uh, the whole uh, city model, city GML uh, system is uh, focused on storing static objects. So on top of that, we also plan to do a database uh, expansion. Uh, for storing time indexed projections of the vegetation change so that we can model how the plants are changing over time. And for this, we use environmental data as input. We plan to offer both of these to the Green Twins client applications, but it's also possible to show additional external greenery data in the client applications if it's uh, kind of of interest in the users. So uh, from our perspective, uh, this uh, system allows us to create these vegetation uh, projections over time in the background and show the same data to all of our climate uh, client applications, uh, despite of uh, their other data content and uh, visualization capabilities. Uh, we also plan to keep all the key data which we need for creating the projections stored in our own city model database, but additional data, data layers, green data layers can then be also streamed to the user from other sources. Uh, a little bit more about this uh, application domain extension, which I mentioned. So we plan to create an urban green uh, uh, extension to the city GML uh, standard City GML format is a kind of global standard for storing your city data and an application domain extension is a standard extension uh, for a specific theme. So here we are planning to do this urban green ADE, which would then contain data types needed for different sorts of green area analysis. And the standard extension would be intended for larger, wider use than just the Green Twins project. So here are some of uh, the current working areas for the standard extension. Our priority uh, is to develop uh, data types uh, for green area factor calculations, which could then be conducted in the virtual green planner, which will be presented later in this, in this seminar, and also other uh, kind of standard extensions, which we are uh, considering our stormwater management module and ecosystem service module. So the third aspect of creating the green digital twin is uh, to create the algorithmic projections. Uh, these we plan to develop uh, starting from simple, uh, simple uh, projections. So we're currently working on the growth trajectories for different digital plans and also including uh, seasonality objects. Uh, but then there are other ideas which we would like to develop the algorithm uh, kind of into a more complex form into the future. Uh, there are two questions, uh, kind of major challenges uh, in the modeling, algorithmic modeling of digital vegetations, which will need uh, some emphasis uh, while we're taking this work further. First of all, how will we deal with missing information or uh, variations in projection data? Uh, for instance, we have very much data on some commercially interesting three species, but we do not know uh, as much about other three species which are not commercially used. Secondly, uh, living objects uh, contain the element of randomness. So if we do projections into the future, how do we deal with this probabilistic uh, random element so that we also avoid giving a false sense of uh, security concerning what is going to happen in the future? while creating these projections. Then the fourth aspect uh, to discuss is the visual visualization in the client okay. application. This one I will hey, skip. Mark, can, you, 
Yeah, thanks. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I just have one slide. Right. So I will skip this sure. because this is coming in the future presentations uh, by Petri and Antti. So this is my uh, final slide. So uh, about the future of green digital twins, uh, they offer a human friendly visual form for presenting very complex data. And they allow us a uh, possibility to walk in, uh, literally walk inside the potential futures. So this practically means that they give, uh, they provide a, a potential uh, for presenting very complex data and scenarios in a very inclusive way. Uh, that would allow us to visualize multiple types of biodiversity and ecosystem service data and show predictions and test scenarios or conduct analysis. The risk there is, however, this uh, creation of a false sense of certainty about the future. Uh, developing these systems requires interdisciplinary expertise. And there's also a lack of uh, research which is oriented in the digital vegetation, and we plan to uh, fulfill that gap a little bit. So thank you for my part. Thank you, Henna. Uh, well, as said, the discussion is, is, is kept in the end. We have something like 50 minutes for, for, for discussion. So keep your oral comments there. Of course, you can, you can write something on the chat already so we can, and everybody can prepare. Yeah, so for the audience, so please feel free to use the chat to write down any thoughts, comments, questions that you have in your mind, we will pick them up and uh, take them as part of the discussion later on. So keep it as, as a memo for yourself as well. Yeah, and so next one, Petri Kangasalo about city models in co-planning. Now we will hear, uh, I, I, I suppose, something about participatory or co-planning, co but that will be the whole, whole I mean, uh, well, we'll see. <laughs> How much we will hear about co planning. So, Petri. Please. Yes. Yeah. Perfect. We can okay. see. Yeah. You okay. and yeah. the presentation. Yes. And your new logo. So, Great. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. We just had uh, three workshops last month for mm -hmm. what is. So, this is almost exactly the same um, for citizens. Uh, but now, this is this uh, uh, research and innovation seminar. So, uh, I will maybe slightly change the content in that sense. But uh, yeah, I'm uh, Petri Kangasso and a landscape architect and a doctoral candidate in Aalto University. And uh, I'm especially uh, part of this uh, virtual green planner team, but also this city GML uh, extension development is, is my responsibility. And, and these two are like uh, what I try to combine in my work. Uh, so uh, first there's this, um, general overview of, of these uh, current planning processes. Uh, it's a bit general because we are dealing with uh, both uh, Finland and Estonia. So uh, we are trying to find similarities, but they are very similar, the planning systems. Uh, so there's the planning phases uh, listed here, like initiation, uh, planning design, implementation, evaluation, research, and maintenance. So here you can see where the participation happens in, in two places, at least. Um, and the citizens are kind of uh, asked, asked to participate and uh, give their opinions of the plans. Uh, so this is how it is currently, mostly. Of course, there can be slight uh, differences, but uh, in general. Uh, so our idea is, of course, to like improve this uh, participation aspect. Uh, here on the left, you can see this uh, well, quite typical situation where the planner is uh, explaining the plans that have been made and the citizens are uh, commenting commenting or just viewing the plans. And uh, on the right side, here's a more engaged approach where the citizens are actually participating in the planning itself in, in this kind of uh, practical workshop. And this, this is something that we are like trying to now digitalize this uh, workshop thing. Uh, so here's uh, one um, slide about this um, alternative planning process where uh, this was made by Falco, Enzo Falco researcher um, uh, about this um, parallel planning processes. So there's this governmental system and the community system. Uh, so this already is a bit similar what happened in, in for example, USA in 60s when there was this advocacy planning in theory uh, established and uh, it's kind of this um, system where, where the citizens uh, 
are part of these communities like neighborhoods or something, and then they're like create their neighborhood plan together. But in the digital world, of course, it can be like any any larger group of citizens. And uh, the virtual green planner tool that we are developing is uh, kind of uh, part of this uh, community process where where it can be also used in this dialogue phase where the like the official and the community plans could be compared. Uh, so yeah, this is like the general overview. I will go quite fast this slide because uh, I will have a live demo also. So here's actually a picture of the live demo. Um, and then of course, because we are in green teams projects, we focus on on this uh, blue green infrastructure and uh, and this seasonal effects. And uh, of course, uh, we are planning to publish it free and open source. Uh, uh, it's almost there, yeah, uh, but not yet. Um, then there's user research. Uh, for example, we have had, of course, the researcher meetings a lot, uh, but then we have also uh, made these uh, citizen workshops, uh, professional workshops, and uh, and we have made these questionnaires for them. And, and still there's, I think, one questionnaire that is, we are like looking people to participate in the actual testing of the tool. So a lot of uh, participatory process already at that, that this phase. So now I can show you the live demo. Okay. Just a moment. It takes a while to start. Demo coming. We are all holding our breaths. No, no worry. This has been done three times already. <laughs> Uh, so uh, this is the, I think you are seeing my screen now, hopefully. So this is the live demo of the virtual green planner. Um, because this is an international project, you can of course change the language, maybe I'll take English in this case. Uh, so let's go to Tallinn. So uh, this is the Tallinn city model. Of course, it looks a bit uh, gray and dull because uh, doesn't have any facade textures for now, but we are working on, on improving it. And um, for example, city of Tallinn has very accurate model of their old town. And we will do it uh, later in this application. And uh, also the vegetation will be added. Um, but yeah, this is the large pilot that we will have. There's, uh, it's around the old town and there's Telis Kivi also here. Uh, some simple functions of the application. There's the browsing mode, the planning mode, and the analyzing mode. So the browsing mode is one that um, uh, has this, uh, where you can compare the plans. So I made two example plans here that you can just quickly switch. And of course, in, in future, maybe you can also comment them. Maybe we can move to Helsinki model now because it's uh, more uh, visual at this phase. So the Helsinki model has used the Helsinki city model, the um, semantic city model in this case. So all the buildings have, at least in theory, they have information, but we have not yet transformed the information here. So they are now in this case, they are only visual. Um, but um, then we have these trees. Uh, we added these trees to the city model because they weren't there yet. So they are added from this uh, Helsinki Regional Environment Services data, which was made actually in the EU project before. Uh, but we are working on ways to actually do our own uh, like tree mapping from, from images. So let's see how it goes in the future. Mm. The basic functionality here is that uh, you can also plan, uh, you can add more buildings. For example, if you want to have a residential or commercial, you can switch them for now. It's only like these very basic shapes, uh, but in the future, you can also apply the functions. Um, of course, this is meant to be very simple also for citizens to use. So we are not aiming to create any like cat software or something like that, but very simple to use. And we, we will try to use uh, like smart um, technology. So kind of, so that the application would help the user to plan. And of course, the vegetation is very important part, but we have not implemented it because it's more com com uh, complex to do. Uh, then, of course, we will have this kind of area 
drawing feature because it's more like a, this large scale planning uh, application. Uh, then, of course, uh, if you if you don't like some buildings, you can also demolish from the city model and just replace with your own buildings. So just uh, meant to be very quick to sketch new new plans. And and the last feature here is the analyzing, which is not implemented yet because this is very complex. Like you you meant to uh, be able to analyze your plans. And lastly, there's this uh, city view, so we, you can actually go to, to go to your plan. But this is not the main functionality of this program because we will have the like the next, which Antti will present the uh, uh, urban tempo application, which is meant more for these street level views. But yeah, this was a quick overview of, of this project. Thank you. Thank you, Petri. That was good. And I especially personally enjoyed the SimCity guard view in the end uh and and again this is clearly where we are headed uh right now it's it's not a common tool for public but it will be interesting to see within the next couple of years of how how this can be made more popular and how how common citizens can can be introduced into into this line of uh viewing of the city and maybe uh participating in city uh, design, planning, proposals, etc. Yeah, really. I mean, I, I, I've seen presentations of, of, of these digital twins many times uh, dealing with buildings and, and, and streets. And, and when the audience is asking that, uh, what is this for? How should we use it? The, the researchers always, you know, are willing to discuss about how, how to make it even more precise model, but but the sort of larger audience is is, is left out. But this this really looks uh, doable, and 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 this participatory um, aspect is 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 quite obvious here in in in, in participatory urban, urban planning. So, yes. So maybe next, Antti Kauppi from Alta University can can tell a bit more about visualizing greenified urban twin. So if Antti you're ready, please go ahead. Yeah, hopefully you yes. can see my presentation yes. now. Yes, in presentation Great. mode. Yes, so my name is Antti Kaupi. Uh, I, uh, here I represent Taltec, uh, working for the green twins and especially the urban tempo uh, corner of it. My uh, the, the title of my presentation today is uh, Visualizing a Greenified Ur Urban Twin. And I, uh, I, it's, it's, uh, uh, there is a risk that I will delve into technicalities because that's what I've been working on since we start, uh, started with this uh, component uh, a, a few months ago. But uh, just a sh short introduction about the background of uh, Urban Tempo. So it's based on a, on a software pilot done by Plehat or by Lauri uh, and Helsinki City. Uh, they, they made this, uh, 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 this piece of software that uh, Fabian already showed you uh, about of uh, Bruno Granholm Square. And it, uh, it was a VR uh, visualization software that kind of you made it possible to study the effects of time and uh, time and uh, seasons to the green environment within an urban environment. Obviously, that makes it easier to really understand what the environment will be end up looking like. So as you can see in the image here, the, the uh, visualization images are often made so that they are from the optimal, <laughs> optimal uh, 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 night, uh, day of uh, year and day. So, and when I look at look out of my window, it really doesn't seem like that very often, at least here in Espo. Uh, so, Urban Tempo will be a client application to the various databases and algorithms developing the project. Uh, and uh, we will, we are working on Unity game engine at this point. Something, let's see. Uh, something uh, Hen already mentioned, uh, there's quite a lot of more complexity 
in, in plant life than in buildings that we are really uh, proficient in modeling already. My background is in architecture, not software architecture, but old school design buildings architecture. And, and uh, uh, to me, uh, buildings life cycle up, up here quite quite simple and quite quite well documented. It's uh, it's it's built according to detailed standards and uh, documents, and then it's it stays as it is. It might be maybe a, a, a uh, don't don't minor changes into uh, once again with uh, with well documented ones, and then it's uh, turned uh, off at some point. And obviously, uh, all of you are fairly familiar how plants work, and that uh, what makes it hard for us uh, modelers and and coders is that the faster seems to be changing all the time. So we're talking about uh, uh, 3D structures rather than 3D uh, four four dimensional structures rather than three di dimensional dimensional structures, and not only that, but they also seem to be responding to their environment. So there's quite a lot of stuff to deal with in order to visualize them in a in a manner that uh, seems right so uh, and uh, it, it's obvious that the current pieces of software that we use for city modeling and visualization they are not well suited for such a dynamic a system which may means that there is a lot of manual handiwork that we are going to have to do um there are uh, a few kinds of uh, green elements that we are adding to the city model uh, i'm not going to uh, you're probably well aware how city models work so i try to pick a big kind of plant specific stuff here obviously we have to do the old school city modeling stuff as well to add these plants into it but i uh, because of time i'll just go through these plant pieces so uh, quite obvious ones are obviously simpler individual individual plants that are stored in the city GML server, and they are uh, uh, either represented by an algorithmically generated uh, plant object or even a uh, hand modeled or kind of photometric photogrammetrically measured one uh, in case of highly recognizable trees. For so they might be, for instance, a large oak in the middle of a park or something like that and then these are there are these area-based biomes which might represent some, something like meadows or forests or bush areas or uh, fields which are uh, stored as an uh, area or volume-based entity and uh, they num consist of a a small number of different species and we will we will visualize them by by uh, placing a, a set of objects into an area based on on uh, uh, a set of rules. Um, so then the the under the hood part. So uh, it's it's quite obvious. To, even though we are doing a lot of work uh, inventorying and uh, creating this database to store information, such complex systems can't be. Uh, uh, can't be saved in the, 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 their state can't be saved completely. We can maybe work on a uh, park scale. We, we know the locations of the trees. We are fairly confident that we can represent a, a set of trees, the branch structure and so on. But it get, gets quite murky when we are approaching things like uh, uh, plant organs such as leaves and so even a small tree might have a hundred thousand leaves so even even a fast computer that uh, uh, that we obviously have at the only university it, it's impossible to uh, model everything and it's so it's not just about modeling as much as possible but also also creating an understanding what people uh, how people experience the plants and and uh, what can be left out when uh, when uh, when visualizing stuff. So uh, as even though the models will be incomplete and the, at different state, we will have to have a set of uh, a set of tools to uh, fill out the missing pieces. Various algorithms we are using parametric geometry. A lot of hacky scripts and shaders on the uh, on the 
GPU. And uh, whenever technology fails us, there will be all kind of handwork uh, preparing models by hand or also in front of us. I have about two and a half minutes, so I will go quickly here. So just a, a few few uh, um, theses that we are working on. Obviously, we are going to need to need to get the plant object to the game engine. There is quite a lot of interesting mathematics, at least for an architect, uh, about uh, coordinate tree projection and stuff in order in order to get uh, geolocated stuff into a into a um, kind of. Uh, game engine coordinates. Uh, there is uh, uh, quite a lot of st stuff going on also with uh, uh, obviously Henna is working on this generation script which will, will output kind of a serialized version of uh, of uh, uh, the plant structure. We are, we are going to need to use various app APIs to get that into the game engine uh, and it, in kind of an optimized uh, uh, game engine compatible uh, pieces. And then uh, we are studying ways how to enrich that kind of geometry to, uh, to make it look like uh, it, it's responsive to, uh, for instance, seasons or, uh, and, uh, and make it obviously look more like a natural plant. There is a, a few. Uh, for at least for me, quite interesting tangents. Let's see if I can get the video going. Uh, about we are, we were working with Henna about uh, creating a, a kind of light sensitive push algorithm that will uh, simulate plant life more or less in real uh, real time, uh, computing from space. So uh, uh, we can use these kind of elements to populate the. Uh, populate the biome uh, object that we are going to have. There is uh, uh, the it, it, we will end up uh, uh, combining all these kind of uh, different uh, objects into into these biomes. Here you can see here you can see kind of a stupidly uh, uh, detailed uh, tree models, parametric generated tree models, and then these. These algorithmically uh, real-time grown trees all, all mashed together in onto a uh, area which has this kind of a, a grass uh, grass field uh, that's also parametric underneath. So that's my time here. I will go really fast in the end. Uh, obviously, in the end, we are going to have all the non-green stuff as any any city simulator will need uh, at in some. UI weather lighting effects and hopefully see that rendered in high enough of frame rates, which is going to need quite a lot of dirty tricks. If uh, I'm so sure, that's all I've got to, today. I'm glad to answer any questions that we might have during the discussion part. Thank you, Ante. That was very compact presentation a lot of uh, detailed uh, information so again uh, i think just from this presentation we could have a discussion for for another 45 minutes uh, so so we'll need to really figure out details of of uh, what aspects to discuss and and we can see that there's lively discussion going on in the chat as well so uh, thank you for everyone who's contributing to that uh, Bilvi Numi has been answering uh, some of the questions already in there, so maybe we'll continue with that in a bit. But before we go dive into the chat, yeah, we have prepared this lively discussion by asking asking uh, Andres Marema from from Tallinn city and Lauri Lemlehti from from city of Helsinki to to give some some comments. They've been discussing these guys before, so they they are members of the project. So so we will probably hear very deep discussion from now on. So, so perhaps Andres will start. And, and uh, yeah, maybe emphasizing the city role and city's perspective, why would this be useful for city citizens, uh, people other than just researchers? So please go ahead. Yeah, thank you everyone. And um, all these nice presentations also. Um, as we agreed already uh, before, um, 
you allowed me to ask maybe a little bit a provocative, provocative question. Uh, please do, to, please do. Yeah, <laughs> uh, just to start the discussion. For that, um, um, I would like to mention two aspects or, or, or uh, two points before to give the background. Um, the first one is uh, that uh, 2023, Tallinn will be a green capital uh, of Europe, European green capital. And um, yeah, every kind of capitals um, are, are um, um, all over the Europe every year, but uh, um, actually all this uh, greenery and, and environmental topics are so hot at the moment that uh, it brings a lot of attention to that. Uh, another aspect um, is that uh, yesterday in Tallinn, um, uh, there was uh, published, um, uh, we had elections, uh, uh, local government elections uh, in October. And uh, now, um, yesterday, uh, Tallinn new government um, uh, was uh, introduced or actually uh, agreement of coalition. And as you can expect, there are uh, quite um, quite many or uh, several uh, several points um, that uh, consist uh, green area and then environmental uh, questions. Uh, that means uh, there is uh, quite a lot uh, political interest in it also, and and all these higher level um, city government. Um, uh, um, these people there. Um, um, also are interested um, how uh, how we could um, uh, how we could uh, improve in this area and um, and it is all uh, always great to have uh, all this um, pol um, uh, political or higher level leaders also on board because they uh, they uh, help to advertise and and uh, promote the project also so my maybe my question here would be like uh, um, it is, the green wins project is quite technical in uh, in lot of areas and um, uh, how we can uh, uh, make it attractive for for um, other other spheres like um, all this public and and uh, um, to, to make it, uh, I don't know, um, interesting for uh, media, uh, for, uh, for, the, for this wider media also. But I think, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, Andres, uh, great comments. So uh, I actually kind of like was thinking about the same thing here. And uh, I think uh, the, like there's the general problem that uh, that these kind of like problems are technicals and they're kind of like very specific issues and that you have to solve and it's kind of like complex issues that you actually have to solve so we kind of like uh and, and the people who can do this kind of work are interested of the details and and you want to communicate whatever you're working on all the time but what i think like what you're meaning is like we need a really good story like what we want to tell from this and uh and 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 i i think like the answer is somewhere like a, the question of participation which was kind of like okay this meeting is about modeling but i think like that the participation issue is the thing and not just seeing it as um if we want to really kind of like push this into a kind of like wider audience and kind of like get the media interested in this uh it should be about kind of like uh how to communicate these very super complex issues, how, how to con concentrate them in a kind of like very understandable visual form. And, uh, and, and I think like we should at the same time think about participation, not something that the kind of like the, that the government or, or cities or counties kind of like give from top down, but, but really kind of like something that, that kind of like, uh, I think like that, that is very uh, included in, in, in 
Petri's uh, proposal is 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 this participation part that the kind of like that the uh, proposals come from the from the from the citizens, and 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 kind of like that's active democracy, but but also like this thing that we have so much we we have political will we have this kind of like a necessary will to actually do something good for our environment, and and it seems kind of like we have we have kind of like billions of investment floating around trying to find good investment places and i think like we're doing something really special here uh so so uh, maybe maybe one thing that i i've noticed myself but I, what i've been following this project is is that there's kind of like talk of the biome and and it's kind of like of course we have to take step by step but what i'm kind of like bit missing what i'm not hearing in here is kind of like this wider uh biome question so not just plant life but how do we include uh, how do we include the animal life? How do we include insect life? And and how? Because that's kind of like complexity level, total like totally next level complexity. So how do are we even close to including something like that? Uh, but that's kind of like that's kind of like what came came for me at least from those talks. Thank you, Lauri. And. And uh, also, thank you, Andres. So now, hey, can I, I still comment time... one? Please do. Can I still comment one thing? I'm, I'm kind of like I, I noticed. I was looking, um, uh, I was looking at the comments here on the on the chat, and and Nora Fagerholm, who who works at the University of Turku, and we met her with a few times, and 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 she's she's kind of like doing nice work in the at the University of Turku direction, and uh, and and. And this kind of like of a question of well, she has like that the uh, the usability problems usually with this IT 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 developments digital digital versions and how how should you deal in uh, how should you deal that kind of like that the these digital tools uh, takes uh, take some people out of the out of the uh out, out of kind of like using and participating into this and and i think this is kind of like if we want to solve this we should kind of like look into uh into the kind of like uh, usability learnings from the video gaming industry and uh and 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 kind of like go to a level like so if you take if you take a video game nowadays and you put it in you intuitively uh, understand how it works nowadays. They're so well done, uh, but it actually kind of like needs quite a lot of kind of like research and experience that you can implement and and testing. So I think like one one part, if you want to make things usable, you should really kind of like invest quite a lot of money and effort into testing. Thanks, Lauria. I think there is. Uh, one question or comment, at least, coming from Aya Staffans. So, Aya, if you have your mic open, please go ahead. Yes, uh, hello, and uh, everyone, and thanks for our researchers of the presentations. Uh, as I think Ale already mentioned in the introduction, uh, that we decided so that we share, in a way, our this using this uh, research and innovation. Uh, webinar so that we today we concentrate on the technical things and then in the future we have a second one where we concentrate on more on this participation and this let's say more maybe popular uh, things so so we I think in our group we really have the very strong uh, commitment to participation and usability and these issues and there is all all the time parallel also ongoing workshops and where we co-create and develop everything together with the stakeholders so but but it's not because as you already saw that the, the, it's very packed all those presentations it's a wide huge uh, project so that's why we we had to make these li limitations uh, to the presentations but uh, also the timing of the project as uh, it's very important issue this how to market and how to popularize uh, research work and and uh, we are very happy that Tallinn uh, became uh, becomes this uh, green capital of Europe because that if anything is a really good timing for us we have now 
two years uh, before that. And we, we have to, as the researchers, we have to be take care that the foundation is strong because we very easily also see everything coming to the market very quickly. And, and we don't, as, as someone of you commented that we don't know what is the data be, behind it or it's out of date or whatever. So we have to do it carefully. But then when in two years in 33, when we have this European uh, green capital in Tallinn, I'm sure that we are ready in a way to come also and, and, and really strongly try to support the political pressure for, for bringing this green to the discussion of, of future cities. So Thank I hope you, I, uh... I also answer this, uh, this uh, <laughs> challenge, which is now uh, Thank mentioned you. here. Thank yeah, you. thank you, Aya, and actually thank you also for bringing bringing up a couple of aspects. So, so uh, bringing up this uh, uh, green capital, uh, nice wording from mm. you saying that we have <laughs> Tallinn as a green capital <laughs> instead of uh, fully tossing it out. So, so we have Group. Tallinn as green capital. I agree with that line <laughs> of thinking, and what Laura was saying there, there about turning this into a very uh, really good story. I think the uh, green capital of Tallinn uh, provides us a window of opportunity where we can really, really go live with the story of of how how to utilize this these green twins. So in that that sense, maybe all this might come together with that, but it requires still quite a lot of work. Uh, at this point, uh, let's officially declare the the presentation part closed and open up the discussion part. So if if all the presenters could switch on your cameras uh, and become panelists, and we'll try to hand out the turns uh, to presenters. And I think the first one was Henna, who had raised her hand. So Hen Henna, please go ahead and uh, say okay, what you Okay, there, have in there your were uh, three go questions ahead. which I could comment. Uh, the two were in the chat about the ecosystem services and about expanding the uh, digital twin to the cities. Uh, but the first one I could uh, address is Lauri's uh, comment about uh, including other uh, living uh, species than, uh, than plant life. So obviously it's, uh, it's, it's very obvious that uh, di creating digital vegetation is, uh, is the first step and the natural next step from that would be to include uh, um, herbivores and especially insects, which are very dependent on and also an important part of uh, urban, urban meadows. Uh, as I explained in my presentation, there's kind of this two level hierarchy of the, of the green data, which could be shown in the digital twin. So the first way we could in, in, incorporate it uh, is to, to include in our applications uh, 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 insect data from elsewhere uh, later on, but once uh, we have the kind of good foundation in the vegetation data models, then we could also integrate uh, this uh, species uh, data also in the digital twin and use that for simulation. Uh, not, not necessarily for simulations, but also in the visualization side in the, in the applications. Uh, maybe I stop here because there are several people and we can return to the other questions later. Thank you for that, and, and thank you for the comment. And, and again, it's, it's great to see that there's very lively discussion going on also in the chat. Uh, I think the next person in line was Fabian. So please go thank ahead. You. Yeah, I just want to add up to, to uh, Hannah and also Lauri. Uh, I think uh, it's, a, it's a quite interesting question, is why the biome question and how to include animal life or how to include other life, it's uh, also kind of human life, how are people acting in, in, in uh, green environments or in nature in general or in environments. Uh, well, we are uh, thinking also about uh, including, uh, for example, in the future, uh, agent-based modeling or synthetic population systems. So we are in touch with researchers in this field, but of course it's uh, right at the beginning. And as, as Hannah said, we are, we are building upon uh, kind of different stages. We are now working on this, and uh, but we are we are very open for collaboration in the future, and we are looking uh, forward to to get other researchers involved and to get uh, kind of comments. And uh, we are very thankful and grateful for contacts, comments, uh, and proposals. And um, to Andres' question, I wanted to add uh, for the visibility of the 
uh, of the green twins, for example, or of, of, of a digital twin in this case. Uh, of course, uh, it needs uh, these stories, as, uh, as you already mentioned somehow. Um, but uh, of course, also digital twins or models are not uh, of any relevance if uh, nobody's seeing them and consequently using them. So um, uh, I think uh, that uh, the, the projects or kind of the, um, the, the approaches that Antti, Petri and Hannah uh, presented are kind of the clue uh, how to visualize, how to bring, uh, how to bring, uh, how to involve people, how to uh, reduce complexity in this very, uh, in this very complex uh, uh, topic. And um, also with this um, participation tools, uh, visualization tools uh, and methods, um, and also as the, the hub, uh, the hub as, a, as an interface, which actually is kind of a built environment, physical thing uh, combined with digital tools, uh, and uh, enhancing uh, interaction and uh, with the, the real world, like the digital and the real world. So that's kind of the idea behind. So, and now I stop because I'm talking too much and let others. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Oh, it's, it's rare to uh, see academic people mm. who are able to cut their own speeches. Mm. <laughs> so, but it, yeah, it's really good. Uh, thank you for, for the several comments uh, for this discussion and, and uh, yeah, we, we agree with that. It would be really interesting to go maybe in a bit further deep into this uh, intuitive nature of, of these tools, uh, see, see how they can be brought closer to regular citizens uh, somehow. Like uh, I think it was Andres or Lauri who mentioned this, this game engines and game tools that are very intuitive and that's why they are attracting people, whereas the development tools are usually very, uh, very uh, demanding for for users uh, and they are not to, made to be very intuitive but to be efficient and that's why they are they are not inviting people to to use them as much uh, so, so thank you Fabian and and uh, let's move to Tuuli Toivonen so Tuuli you had raised your hand as well and you've been mentioned several times here yeah, thank you so much for, for for the presentations. Really, really fantastic work, I think. And and understanding that today's session is about the technology, uh, I, I think that you've been doing really, really important work this far already uh, with trying to be sort of preaching and trying to be building something which would be capturing, first of all, even the vegetation that has not been there and aiming at the seasonality, which is like thinking about the current uh, information that we have on urban greenery that is being used in planning. It's often planner, it's map type data, which doesn't have the sort of human view in it, except from derived from street view images. And so they are almost always taken in summertime, thinking about our conditions in, in for example, in Helsinki, where we have less than half a year, uh, half a year roughly, uh, leaves in the trees. So actually having the seasonality, for example, included in any visualizations that we do of urban space and of urban vegetation is of utmost importance. And therefore, like having this kind of modeling in place and the technology in place to me is, is like super fantastic for any later applications. So, so I would just like to be congratu congratulating on the you on these steps and then thinking about the vegetation still, that even if I, I admire of having the role in further biodiversity data. So still, as we know from many, many examples of vegetation is a surrogate of, of also other life, for so also insect life and so on. So having that step uh, to some extent covered as you have now been advancing is already a huge step on that direction. Not to say that you shouldn't be aiming at further, but also to be saying that you can be, I think, quite happy of of reaching this level. I had a question in the chat that when do you when do you think uh, or how do you see that what is the goal in the end? Not in this project, I understand that that is uh, limited, but do you think that at some day there will be a seasonally sensitive digital green twin uh, that would be also long term maintained having data changing on changing vegetation over time? So is that the realistic goal? Thank you. Would somebody like to answer this on behalf of Green Twins? Uh, 
they just need more funding to keep that live. That's Point. the usual answer from research. There researchers. should be good funding already in the, in the pilot process. So, <laughs> yeah, La Lauri, Lauri here. I can I can a little bit comment to that. So so. Um, generally like so this project will last until 23 uh, and then the idea is is to kind of like create commercialization of of this project uh i i it's very clear that kind of like this uh this this is the kind of project that will need kind of like years and and even decades of of development and long term so the question is like can we muster up a good enough story so we can get investments uh, investments to kind of like create a real kind of like company uh, related to this this data, but I, I think it would be in demand in, in the whole global scale and and um, and um, well, let's see, we're working on it. Thanks, Lauri, and and Henna, you had raised your hand again, so please go ahead. Yeah, thank you. So I wanted to comment uh, on this uh, expanding the. Uh, digital twin to cover entire cities and the seasonality thing. So, so Petri and Antti can better answer on behalf of the two applications that they are working on, but on behalf of the plant library and the green information model, we have been building it uh, from the perspective that it could be covered, could be expanded to handle much larger, larger areas and the vegetation of much larger areas. And that's why we have built in this importance hierarchy so that if we intend to model uh, vegetation of very large areas, then we can deal with possible performance or capacity issues by scaling down the, the information content that we store from individual plant. And the system should then allow the digital twin maintainers and creators to, to choose the, how much uh, detailed information is stored in the system and which is just kept in the general level. And the rest is then the visualization matter, which is done at the application level. Thank you, Henna. Uh, and Petri, you had a comment in mind. So Petri, go Yeah, I can, I can add the application side to that. Uh, so the virtual green plan and rust plan to um, actually in the final phase include the whole cities because it was meant to stream the data from the city databases. But of course, um, it's about the resources and. That's why we had to pilot areas because you had to prepare the data. And we are now using this game engine actually for also for the green virtual green panel. So that means we have to prepare everything to game engine, which takes time. So this is the reason we, we still don't have the whole cities, but maybe in the future. Thank you, Petri. Uh, yeah, again, we're we're in a situation where of course we are riding on the waves, so so we're we're doing something that hasn't been done before and uh, taking steps in a really wide field. So, so uh, it's good to see how, how the research advances uh, uh, in several parallel fields, uh, how it's expanding to cover more details and more areas at the same time. And again, we hope that the Green Twins project will be able to keep these uh, issues and, and the results also uh, in common discussion. So uh, for, for all of the audience, please remember to follow uh, the Green Twins project also in the forthcoming years. Uh, did we have a, a hand raised there? I think Antti was thinking about asking or commenting something. It, so Antti, it, go just, ahead. just to add, to add a comment to, to this question about whether we are, we are closing into a, a, a uh, green wind, twin that's uh, seasonally uh, sensitive and can be kept up to date. Uh, uh, I'm not going to promise that we are able to do it during this project, but uh, I've seen quite uh, interesting strides towards it because there is work done in uh, done in uh, Tallinn now by Dao Chawen, who uh, is uh, creating algorithms to extract enough information from uh, remote sensing data that we can localize trees and and uh, even recognize by fairly high confidence what trees there might be. So uh, armed with that information, it's not at all unlikely that it's possible to uh, keep the uh, model up to date enough to have such kind of a more, uh, twin for any use you might be thinking of. 
Thank you, Antti. Carla, did you have something in mind? Uh, well, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking perhaps this is too strategical or, or even philosophical question and, and then going far, far from the, to the future. Uh, but as I'm, 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 I'm listening to, to researchers and, 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 and developers, programmers here, uh, how, how they try to uh, develop the, the, the twin, the, the modeling even more and more precise. Uh, I understand it, 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 it's from sort of human uh, view so, th so that it would look like more and more precisely like we, we, we do see uh, or nature or, or city or, or, or these, these plants in, in reality. And now there, there were notion that, that what about animals, birds and, and, and thinking of insects or, or you know, ants marching there that we don't actually see at all. I mean, the huge amount of, of, of the animals all the time in, in the city. Now, if, if in the future you're able to, to model these little ants and, and, and this, you know, flying things, birds and, and insects, uh, is, it, is, it, is, it, is it any more uh, something that we can, is it any more twin? Is it something more? And, and is this the sort of orientation and approach uh, that, that, that you are willing to? Uh, to go, that 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 the city city modeling and, and these these digital twins are, are even more uh, sort of bringing sort of several layers that we don't actually realize as as a sort of natural view. Difficult would, question. Would, would somebody <laughs> care to? <laughs> pick this up and answer this very easy and simple question. Maybe Fabian, you have raised your hand. Yes, I think uh, that's that's actually the the, the biggest chance uh, having digital twins or digital uh, models in in general uh, is that we can uh, show the invisible. So we can also show simulation, which is, uh, for example, not uh, visible at all for for people. That's not only for for animals or for living species, but that's also a true for climate or uh, weather data. So we can uh, hopefully in the future also integrate all these aspects into uh, in, in relation, for example, with the green environment, but also with the living beings uh, in general. Uh, and I think uh, like wind flow uh, or emissions uh, or uh, CO2 emissions, uh, all these topics are highly relevant also in the in the in the in the view of uh, climate change and uh, and uh, other uh, challenges we have in the world, so I think uh, that's actually the future, and that's what we uh, have to face uh, face for. And uh, yeah. All right. Yeah. So we are in Thank the you. beginning, actually. <laughs> Uh, uh, I'm, I'm, as, as a pure oh, oh, generalist only, I can I can understand. Yeah, and, all right, thank you. Actually, Fabian, since you're speaking, so uh, if you have that potential application slide somewhere available, could you share that with us for for a bit of discussion? Yeah, you should allow me to share my screen. I think this is not activated at the moment. Uh, no. Just the second. The last share at the moment. I will, I will do my magic here, and now you should <laughs> be able to do it. Your genius. Wait a second. I just have to find the person. Yeah, I'm, I'm just really, a, I'm really good at this. Just a wireless <laughs> connection. Nothing special. So where are my slides? Searching my slides, which is more complicated in this case. Well, where is it? <laughs> here we are. Perfect. Uh, we still have 20 minutes left, so. Yeah. Great. Right. <laughs> so, can you see the slide? Uh, yes. Yeah. yeah. So the Last one. Mode. And this one is the one. You so maybe. The one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is the one. So so maybe taking a look at this and and getting comments from from uh, everyone, maybe especially from the city side. So so. How, how does everyone feel about these? Because again, I'm very interested in, in the aspect of what's in it for us, what's in it for regular citizens who want to live their lives. Uh, how do they benefit of, of this research? Is it just something that is, is a nice uh, add on to maps that's making them more detailed and precise? Or, or are there some 
some practical uh, impacts coming out of this research. So, so in, in general, maybe this could be one part of the discussion and, and also uh, maybe provocative uh, question or comment. Uh, Risto Linturi, a couple of weeks ago, a future visionary, uh, commented that uh, a real digital twin uh, is not about just one directional uh, expression of, of, of something that's uh, existing in real life, but real digital twin, twin needs to have a kind of feedback connection. So action connection where you can control uh, the reality through this interface. So for example, you could be clicking your mouse and there would be a new tree growing or something like this. So uh, with this list uh, of potential applications and this uh, provocative uh, argument from Risto Linturi, would uh, anyone from the project care to, care to elaborate and comment on this? Is this useful for people outside of city developers uh, unit and, and research world? Uh, are these uh, some applications that would be realistic in the near future or even today? And, and uh, are there direct benefits already from, from just uh, enhancing kind of uh, what maps used to be, turning them into very accurate digital uh, <coughs> 3D models? Or, or does, would this require some kind of uh, actions that could take place from, through these uh, 3D interfaces? I know this is a tough one. No one dares to. Well, I think, Punch. of course we, of course we have to, we have to be aware that uh, these are, tools and uh, also digital twins are tools and they cannot solve every problem you cannot uh, yeah if uh, it's it's not it's not just digital tools we can use for solving problems of course and it's nice of course to have a digital twin and a visualization but it needs action occur actually Either we went so, um, pardon pardon oh okay Don't know if you can hear me. So just in case you're hearing us. I'm hearing you. Okay. 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 No, you're... So, so we're back. Yeah. We, we, I think we lost the connection for a bit. Ah, okay. Yeah, and now we lost everything. We don't see the screen at all. Worms are on this side. Okay. So Fabian, please continue. Yeah. So uh, I think that we, we, we need a, a combination of, of, uh, of uh, digital and, and, and real tools and uh, human interaction, of course, and uh, there is, politics come is, in, comes into play, that people come into play. Uh, one of, uh, one of uh, the goals I think we have to, to, uh, to meet is uh, to bring kind of these topics and research and, uh, and uh, also uh, measures down to, to the neighborhoods, down to the citizens uh, for, for real action and to make people aware uh, with the help of uh, digital tools, of course, but also in real, uh, in real uh, participation. We are again in participation and uh, in real context to make them aware how they can uh, contribute to the change of, uh, of, of cities and how they can contribute and give them kind of also strength in, in the sense of uh, involving in the planning process and involving in political processes. So I think that's uh, kind of the clue in, 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 this, in this game. So it's not about only digital twins, but it's also the form of participation, how involving people and how to motivate people to, to uh, support change. Thank you. And Dooley had raised your hand. Yeah, just there to, to rebut. Can, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Yeah, so just to continue on that thought that whether, like, what is the meaning of this change? So somehow looking from, from the sort of long history of mapping uh, and then the, the digital mapping and so on. So I, I do think that this is, this is a very important step forward in, in the sense of 
of the participation as well, that making what used to be maps and very abstract, something which is tangible for people and something that can be visualized from the perspective of people, is of course allowing participation in a new way, even if I understand what Nora was saying in the chat, that, that sometimes there are technological limitations in using these new methods as well, but still, like, if successful with this, this is uh, really the fundamental change in trying to be, bring the future realities to people. And I guess that that's obvious for, for everyone. What, but what I sort of wanted to highlight still is what Henna said at the end of her presentation is that then in order for things to be successful in this respect, it really needs to be accurate in the end. So when you include detail in the presentation uh, or visualization, then there is also a sort of uh, like expectation of of accuracy. Uh, so when you look at abstract maps, you can understand that they are like not ex the borders are not exactly where they have been drawn and so on. But then if you present something in high detail, you expect it to be also like depicting reality as it will be or as it is. And, and that probably creates expectations to, to these methods that, that might be hard to uh, to then then meet. But to me it looks that you're on the right track. Thank you. And yeah, good reminder. And, and this is maybe a separate discussion for, for how to make sure that the digital material is con constantly up to date and people have this uh, re reliability for them. Uh, otherwise, they will stop using, like it was mentioned uh, in the beginning. Uh, next comment from uh, Nora. Please go yes, ahead. Yes, thanks. And thanks for organizing this very, very nice event. Uh, continuing a bit what Tolly pointed out, actually very two important points that link to each other, this participation topic and then the, this immersiveness and, and how we understand and, and, and are able to create opinions in this uh, using these future wonderful technologies. And what I'm most worried about kind of is this this digital development that of course we would like to leave no one behind and therefore we as as a research community and developers we should indeed very much pay attention to the fact that we aim to make this accessible to all kinds of people that we have living in our cities and this is a challenge i i you know it and i know it but i hope it is something that we really take seriously thanks Thank you, Nora. Mm. And uh, next one would be Aya. Yes, um, maybe <laughs> somehow uh, I have to maybe repeat myself in a way that um, having worked for a long time with these participatory processes and, and also with the developing the methodology, so we very easily we go to the me uh, special methods and improving them. And uh, I see a lot of potential as, as I think many of us, we share the possibilities of, 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 of these models and simulations in, in the context of urban planning. But always we have to remember the, the, how dependent participation is always on the context and on the, on the political uh, community around it, and, and w w which is always local. And uh, so, so what is finally the impact, however great tools we have, so we always have to be also critical on the, what is the impact, what kind of uh, influence uh, do uh, these people's voices or the good tools have on the final solutions of, uh, of uh, urban planning, for example. So uh, maybe this is also what Marke in the chat uh, took that we, we we have to concentrate on the solutions what kind of solutions and how 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 what kind of arguments do we have behind them so so there is always this big challenge of, of, of work working together towards better solutions and uh, and there we have always a lot to do I can tell <laughs> thank you uh and maybe I could uh, still kind of repeat this this question then related to these digital twins. Uh, so are these just 
advanced maps uh, or blueprints that could be used uh, in development or do they bring something extra or is there, is there something additional that would be inside that would be bring, bringing benefits uh, for citizens since, since this would be really interesting to see and again uh, thinking about from regular citizens perspective who would not be necessarily so interested in in uh, develop city development or urban development uh, would they get some kind of benefits what would attract them to to uh, engage using this tool or or are they just uh, designed to to uh, facilitate the city city planning or urban planning process is is that just the niche field where we are working on or could it be something much bigger that would be it? Uh, bringing value to all citizens, regardless of what their background and, or interests are. Uh, Fabian, please. Thank you. Well, I, I, I think that uh, that's a very good question. Uh, I think that the digital twins enhance uh, kind of uh, future perspectives. So you have kind of a certain uh, level of uh, uh, prediction. So you can predict how things will be in the future or how they would look like, for example. I think they can reduce complexity uh, in the sense of visualization, for example. So, uh, if uh, I, I think it was uh, it was Anti who presented, or uh, the or no, it was Petri, I think, with the the the, the classical uh, participatory processes. So you have somebody presenting something in, in 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 the front row, and everybody else is listening. And usually, these people are speaking in their language. If it's architects or urban planners or transport planners. So they have their specific language, they have their specific uh, also visualization uh, language. And um, I think with, this, with the help of digital twins, you can, uh, you can uh, see kind of different, uh, different visions, for example, um, different variants of planning. You can, uh, you can uh, if they are visualized, for example, in virtual reality, you can choose your own perspective. So you don't have kind of this uh, typical architect's renderings with a blue sky and uh, and birds flying uh, in, in in a formation and and uh, having kind of uh, beautiful uh, beautiful flowers everywhere but you can choose kind of in this case uh, the the temporal change you can choose your own perspective you can experience how things would look like or work like uh, if if they were changed or uh, you can even change kind of this this uh, future with the with the uh, co-planning application, for example, so this is something uh, which is uh, quite interesting uh, to focus on, and that's exactly what what um, what is uh, kind of uh, I think needed in this in this uh, in in this discussion of of uh, more democratic uh, more democratic futures. And I want to add something uh, because uh, I think Nora. Uh, said uh, concerning this uh, developing the digital development in involving people i think we have a, a really great chance to involve people through these digital tools um that uh, visualization and i have uh, quite some years of, of experience with uh, with immersive uh, visualization and involving people in this uh, processes in participatory processes uh, we can include people who were excluded until today and uh, this uh, kind of serious game approach or kind of also spectacle is something that people like and you can bring in much more heterogeneous groups we had for example the group of people uh, of people uh, with with handicaps who uh, who cannot understand speech or who cannot understand uh, who have a different uh, people who have a different language background or a different educational background kids uh, elderly so this is kind of a more inclusive way, I think, to probably not the perfect way, but a more inclusive way to to involve people. Thank you, Fabian. So so maybe uh, taking this uh, using different words, so making this less boring, more attractive mm -hmm. to people who exactly who not, don't care. exactly, and that's something I, we I, forget. I, I, about. Yeah, it's it's yeah. it's also kind of uh, it's important to have fun. People like to have fun. People like to have joy. Uh, people like kind of the spectacle and uh, people are attracted by this and I think it makes uh, it's hard to include people if you just uh, if you just speak in your uh, in your scientific language so that's important to have people involved. 
Perfect. I might yeah. be quoting you on this. I, I, I like this line of thinking. <laughs> I have one, one, one uh, boring question. It goes to, 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 to cities, Lauri Lemilehti and, and, and Andres Marema. Uh, uh, at the moment, this is clearly, uh, obviously, uh, academic level on, on development level. But in the future, would you like to buy this kind of service from, from companies? Or, or is, 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 this, is this good? To have them or this kind of sort of university public funding thing that is, is at, at the moment. So making it into real commercial products. And maybe we can get the comments from Liz Andres. Uh, yeah. Then yeah. we had Aya after Andres, and then we think we'll need to wrap up for today. Andres, please go ahead. Yeah, uh, that's a great question. Um, how to commercialize it? Um, because uh, uh, if you want to have this project to be um, uh, resilient or um, uh, continue after uh, after um, uh, academic work is uh, has ended, then uh, uh, yeah, sure, uh, there has to be some way how to uh, br bring in funds uh, to the project also. Um, not sure, not sure. Um, uh, uh, is the client uh, or a target? Uh, uh, for the software, actually, a city government or, or public sector. Not sure about this one. Uh, hopefully, in the future, we can discuss it a little bit more. Um, I wanted to add over here is that uh, um, during our last workshop, um, to, uh, to add to Fabian's thoughts also, um, um, our uh, uh, one uh, city architect, um, uh, Paco, actually mentioned that the tool might be a good, uh, a good uh, thing how um, uh, like professional architect and uh, a citizen can communicate because it is really um, um, one-sided at the moment because architect, architects can create the uh, pretty visualizations and uh, express their uh, ideas and visions. Uh, but uh, citizens uh, are not as uh, capable so easily to use all this uh, difficult software to express what they would do differently. They have to uh, uh, be vocal, but as we know, it does not describe it uh, as good as it uh, as it should. So it uh, could help to improve um, like a two way communication a little bit more that citizens can show uh, to the city architect. Well, we would like to uh, change this one and this one, this thing and this building here and uh, this green area over here and and it uh, could be like that. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, as uh, was mentioned before in the uh, Petri's uh, presentation, that um, uh, different scenarios. And uh, to end it uh, here, uh, I, uh, uh, Fabian, can you uh, put back the last slide that you had on screen? Because uh, it's, a, it's a really fun fact. Um, uh, if uh, we could uh, have uh, basically to every line, three uh, words um, um, in front of these lines. Uh, what, uh, what say, um, yeah. Um, if we add there, uh, we will improve um, these things, then we get the, all, all these points from our uh, uh, coalition agreement that, that was published yesterday, actually. <laughs> Almost all these points are somehow <laughs> written in there. So uh, I guess that uh, they, they stole from you all this, uh, from your slides. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it, it's a clear, clear connection here, actually. They would like to do these things. And it seems that we have tools that we can provide. Yeah, thank you. Yep. Thank you. Then Aya. Go ahead. Yes, thank you. I think Short this Andres, comment. uh, Andres comment minute. was so nice to uh, for, for closing the whole, whole session because it's, it's really encouraging, I must say. 
but you were asking of the applications, different fields uh, outside uh, planning and urban future discussions. So maybe there's some somewhere in the further future, there might be some possibilities in the field of tourism, for example, where this greenery and, and nature plays, uh, plays a uh, very strong role. And then maybe also from history, this time aspect where you see how, how nature has developed in time and how it will. So, so there are, I think, those fields where this nature and greenery plays a crucial uh, role. So there might be some, some uh, applications which we actually don't know it yet. But yes, thank you, Andreas, for this. Thanks. And nice final policy. words, I think, from, from Laure, who lowered his hand already. But I would like to hear what you had in your mind. As a representative of the city of Helsinki. Yeah. You yes. also have one minute. Okay, quick one. Um, so, so to go for the question, is this some is this software development something that should be should be done done by these academic projects or companies? Uh, I personally feel that it's uh, this is something that uh, cities uh, or or academic institutions are not kind of like the quickest movers in general. So this is in the future is going to be a very comp competitive uh, field so you will have a kind of like a, you need to have a very agile organization and I think kind of like companies probably the best form to do it uh, I would imagine that the city of, of of Helsinki would eventually as if it kind of like evolves that it has to use like use cases for the cities I think like all the cities in the world will be interested in these kind of like products but they but the, maybe the difficulty is that the that the cultures inside and the existing uh, existing softwares and databases that have do vary kind of like from place to place. So so whatever kind of like service that you provide needs to be robust enough to kind of like consider this city individuality. Um, so so kind of like those are my thoughts about that. Thank you. And with these words, uh, we have to conclude this session so thank you for a very lively discussion uh, yeah. both on the chat definitely which has been extended uh, that it seems that it's been a separate completely uh, completely separate th thread of discussion and, and I hope the participants can continue this discussion uh, one possibility for this is through our our blog at the finesse center's uh, new website so finnesscenter.eu and research blog there. Yeah, or finnesscenter.eu slash blog. So uh, maybe you can participate there and, and keep this uh, discussion ongoing over there. Uh, on my behalf or our behalf, we'd like to thank all participants for the discussion and, so and your presentations uh, for, for the project or the pilot. So Green Twin, we hope all the best and we're looking forward to hearing more uh, really good results from you, uh, hearing how, how your project and your, your approach is improving uh, uh, the use of Green Twins participation and uh, urban development in general. Yeah, next springtime, hopefully, I don't know, February, March, might be possible to, to continue this discussion, especially on, on, the, on the participatory perspective as, as, as I, I was mentioning in, in her comments so if you're interested in larger discussion please follow us on twitter follow us on youtube you should see links plenty of them in the chat and in on our website uh, for now we thank you and uh, hope to see you next time at the recession which is on mobility i believe future mobility first of december same time 10 to 12. Find the link, so, register to it, and see you there. And read the papers of the researchers also. That's good practice. Also. Yes. If you like reading research papers, please do that. Bye-bye <laughs> for now. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Have a good day. <laughs>